Hello, so today I'm making a video that is gonna be about the show It's a Sin, which just came out on the BBC Channel 4. Pray gather here upon for the star turn of the night. I give you Miss Rachel Toza! So it just came out yesterday and then I finished watching all the episodes because I was slow and I was like, um, are we gonna have to wait each week to watch the episodes? But then at the end of the first episode, because I was watching the first episode live and then at the end they were like, the rest of the episodes are streaming on BBC Channel 4 or whatever and I was like, oh, okay. So then I went to watch the rest of the um, episodes. So the show It's a Sin was previously titled boys or the boys I can't really remember but it was one of those and it has Ali Alexander and it has a lot of other really good actors in it and I've been I had been waiting so long to watch this show and I was like what finally at last so I finally got to watch the show so that's what this is gonna be about so let's get right into it okay so in the show we have five young people and eventually they become friends so we have Richie Jill, Ash, Roscoe, and Colin, and they all become friends through a um, kind of little meet cutes really. They just kind of meet each other and they become best friends. So anywho, the kind of, not really main character because they're all technically the main character, but the kind of main character guiding us through the show is Ollie Alexander's character, Richie who I was like, isn't Richie Tozer, Tozier, whatever you call it, the name of one of the kids in It? I'm pretty sure that's one of the names of the kids in It. I'm not 1000% sure because I never watched It. I've only seen clips of it, but I'm pretty sure that that's one of the names of one of the kids in It, but correct me if I'm wrong. So anywho, when the show is first starting, we have Richie and he's kind of narrating just He's just saying random stuff. He's talking about how women weren't respected like in the past or their emotions and things weren't taken seriously. Like basically people were like, women can't be um, violent, women can't commit crimes, they're this, they're that, blah, 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 blah. And we just kind of get a feel of how his family is from that point. And then he goes off to college and his dad is like, oh, blah, 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 here you go in case you're gonna go with any girls. And he's like, whoop de doo little do you know. So <laughs> he throws all the stuff that his dad gave him in the river and we're off. Now, I believe the next person we meet is Roscoe and he's with his family and I was like, <laughs> not to be whatever, whatever, but I can't because I'm like, I cannot the church. I cannot. But anyways, he, um, his family is deeply involved in the church and I don't know if they found out that he's gay or not yet. I think they did because they were questioning him. I really forgot why they were questioning him. But anywho, his mom starts speaking in tongues like, you know, old African ladies, whatever. She starts being like, oh my gosh, blah 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 blah, what are you doing, blah 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 blah. Tori Atawaji! Atawaji! Ni Tori ni Nuromu! So he um, decides that he's gonna leave. Well his sister gives him some money and she's like our uncle's gonna take you back to Nigeria and if you go back to Nigeria they're gonna kill you so you need to leave. So he goes and he puts on this like little two-piece outfit and he's just like you guys are trash bye and I'm like you can't just I mean you can but like they don't understand. So I'm like the sad part is as wrong as because <clears throat> As wrong as his family is, and as wrong as people back then were, as like people don't understand. Not that there is anything to understand because it's just like, just like boys and girls like each other, boys and boys can like each other, girls and girls can like each other. It's literally that simple, but people make it bigger than it is. But anywho, that's not the point. So moving along, I think the next person we meet is Colin, I'm pretty sure. I can't 1000% remember, but it doesn't matter. So he starts a job working at a, um, What's it called? Basically, he works at the store from Kingsman where they sell suits. That's where Colin is. Hello. Well, don't just stay in there. In you come. That's a good lad. And I forgot to say in the beginning that there will be spoilers in this because I did see all the episodes. So if you haven't seen all the episodes and you're waiting, I would say not watch the rest of this video because there will be spoilers galore. So, anywho's. 
Basically, this first episode is where we kind of meet all the characters. Then one day we see Richie and he goes to um, school. And while he's at school, he sees Jill and Ash for the first time. And they're like in a class. And Jill realizes that he's looking at Ash and he's just like kind of staring like, hi. Hi. <laughs> and then she comes outside and says hello to him and she's like do you like him and he's like what do you mean what gay what me no what never and I'm like why do people always do that people are like oh not me whoop de doo nope yay and I'm like <laughs> okay anyways so this is before he was all self-accepting whatnot whatever nobody cares she's like it's fine just come to this party with us blah 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 and basically he ends up having to confront his own biases and whatnot when he asks um, Ash some- well he doesn't ask actually, he just puts that onto him and it's like, he, why do you- what are we doing? Like I've had so many friends that have done like stuff like that and I'm just like that was so unnecessary, unnecessary and uncalled for. Like you could have just not said anything at all. Like one time there was a boy and I was like, I forget how we got into the conversation but he said he was from Minnesota and I was like oh that makes sense and everybody was like why is it because he's white and I was like no it's because he sounds and acts like a Canadian that's why I said he him being from Minnesota makes sense because he seems Canadian and everybody was like what does that mean and I was like it makes sense to me so you are the ones I was like you guys are the ones putting and projecting your racism onto me. So anywho, <laughs> continuing along. So they all eventually get together and Ash is just like, obviously you have some internal biases that you need to confront and you need to meet people of other races to understand like what you're saying is problematic. And I can't remember if it's in the first episode or the second episode, but eventually Richie and Jill go to meet his parents and his parents are kind of being racist to her because when she gets there, they're like, <laughs> Where are you from? Uh -huh. With the fake smile and she's like, um, I'm from here. What do you mean? And they're like, but where are you really from? And I'm like, people always do that to me. Like, oh my god. Like at my job, there was a lady like, I don't know why people can't just leave it alone. Like my name. She was like, okay, that's such a pretty name. I was like, thank you. Move on. She was like, what's the origin? I was like, I don't have time to be giving you my family back history. Leave. Get out. I was like, if you want to know, there's a whole bunch of everything. So it would take so many decades for me to go down the line of every single like generational whatnot of my family. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. So get out. Just like she said, she was like, I'm from England. I'm from, she should have just said I'm from here, but she told them her family is from the Dominican Republic, whatever. I'm like, I wouldn't have told them that. I'd have been like, does not concern you. Get out of my face. You must be Jill. You never said. Where are you from? Just outside working. Oh, but originally, what's your What's your, what's your uh, heritage? So, anywho, she goes, because she brought, well, Richie brought her, or she brought him. Well, she, whatever, she took him to his house because he needed to tell his parents that he was gay. And when he got there, they assumed that him and her were boyfriend and girlfriend, and they just accepted that as fact, even though they were racist, they were like, whatever, we're gonna accept it and we're gonna move on. I can't really say straight up racism so much as like, I don't know, those people that try too hard to like not be racist that they end up being racist and you're just like, can you not? So anywho's, um, yeah, so that's basically episode one, just all the characters meet each other and it's a whole conglomerate of whatever. So in the first episode, actually, I nearly forgot, Neil Patrick Harris's character is kind of the first introduction of what the story is going to be about even though if you saw the trailers you know what the story's about you know it's about the 1980s you know it's about aids you know it's about all that type of stuff whatever whatever anywho in the store that colin works at he meets this man and that man is played by neil patrick harris and he is um like basically his mentor whatever whatever then one day he stops showing up at the job and they basically fire him they basically get rid of him and they're like whoop-de-doo whatever and he dies like spoiler alert he dies it's tragic and i was like really episode one you had to kill somebody off my god but it is what it is so basically that's when we first kind of see that aids is starting to creep over into england and europe and london i don't know if they're in london i don't think they're in london they're somewhere else because i know they're all from random places they're all supposed to be like 
universal conglomerate all around the world type friends. So anywho's, we eventually go on to episode two. And in episode two, we meet Gregory, who they call Gloria, I believe. That might not be the name, but I think that's the name. But they all have like other alternate names like Richie, also is Rachel. And then I'm pretty sure Gregory is Gloria. I forget what they called Colin, but, but yeah, so they do that type of stuff. Ding ding, all aboard. Hi Gloria, nice uniform. Joy Which is cute, it's fun, it's fine. So their other friend Gregory, he contracts AIDS tragically in episode two. I'm pretty sure it's episode two, I don't remember. But I was like, the messed up thing about it is, kind of like what's going on right now, nobody really knows what's going on and people are just doing any and everything that they think is the right thing. And the messed up part is, I said a lot like in the beginning of AIDS when they were like, only gay people, only gay men can get it. They were like, only these people can get it, only this race, only animals, it comes from Africa, blah 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 blah. It's kind of like the coronavirus where they're just putting out all this misinformation that's coming out of nowhere. Because first they were like, it came from China, then they were like, never mind, it came from here. Then they were like, only old people can get it. Then they were like, never mind, anybody can get it. Then they were like, these are the symptoms, these are the symptoms. Some people's arms and legs fall off, some people don't feel anything at all. We don't know what's going on. Nee. And I'm like, why? Like, if people treated the coronavirus like AIDS, we could have been over the coronavirus by now, but people didn't. Like, people treated AIDS like it was the coronavirus, and it didn't have to be like that. But because people were ashamed, and people were, like, felt like they were so horrid and criminal, they were like, uh, you know what, I'm just not gonna say anything, and then it got out of control, and then everybody died, which is really tragic. So, yeah. I just feel like misinformation is why these types of discussions need to happen at schools and they need to do better education because I didn't learn anything in school like not that I've ever been with anybody anyways like I'm only 20 like I literally just turned 20 basically yesterday but still like I'm like I learned literally nothing in school anything I ever known is because I either did my own personal research or I saw it in some show somewhere and I was like is that really a thing like education where like the most I got was this health 101 class where all they taught you was how to do a self cancer screening which is not really anything like only thing I learned about like AIDS was when I did a um, course in bloodborne pathogens and I learned about HIV hepatitis A B C and then how it can go into AIDS and all that type of stuff so they don't really teach you anything at school not the point <clears throat> in episode 2 with Gregory slash Gloria, um, he tells Jill, but he doesn't tell anybody else and he doesn't want her to tell anybody else because he feels bad that he has AIDS and he's like, don't tell anybody because I don't want them to think anything of me. And I just need to say, his family is absolute trash. Like, they're so mean to her. And I'm like, this whole show made me mad because the way everybody treated Jill was unnecessary, rude, and all of them need to get deleted because she deserved better, okay? Like, I'm mad. She deserved so much better. Like, nobody even said sorry to her. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't said all this stuff. I, I can't. Like, I cannot. Thank you. Thank you. For nothing. For encouraging them. So anyways, moving along, so she starts to take care of um, Gregory at his house and she brings him stuff like every week. So basically she's like hello fresh for Gregory because she makes him stuff and she brings him stuff which is really really nice and it's a good thing to do as a friend because she doesn't want him to feel bad and she doesn't want him to be sad or anything like that so she's like okay it's fine but she's still really on edge because obviously it's a really scary thing when nobody knows what's going on and you don't know how it spreads and you're like, uh, am I gonna catch it by walking in your house, blah 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 blah. Then he was like, I have tuberculosis. She was like, why wouldn't you tell me that? That's, um, contagious, that's infectious, why would you do this to me? And it's like, people acted like if you went like this to somebody with AIDS you were gonna catch it, but it's not like that. And I'm like, unlike the coronavirus when it actually is like that and people act like it's not like that. Like, if you touch somebody with the coronavirus, you could literally kill them and people don't take it seriously. Basically, 
like I said, the sad part is that Gregory also ends up dying and she doesn't tell any of their friends why he died. So basically they all think that he just abandoned them. I don't even think she told them he died. I think, yeah, she wasn't telling them anything because she was a good loyal friend and she didn't tell them. Though I'm like, at some point she should have told them, but that's not her responsibility. If he didn't want them to know, he didn't want them to know. She's a good friend. She keeps secrets. She doesn't tell people's business and I like her for that. So basically all his friends end up not all of them, but Roscoe ends up hating him because he's like, ah, how dare you, you just left, you didn't say goodbye, but he didn't know that he was dying and all this stuff was going on. And I can't remember if it's this episode or the next episode, but eventually Roscoe starts working as basically a sugar baby, but we'll get into that in a minute. So continuing along, <clears throat> in episode three, Colin somehow contracts AIDS. I don't understand because I'm like, I don't think, I'm like, did he do anything with anybody? Where was I? Because I'm like, was I not watching properly? Because I don't remember him being with anybody. Because he might have, but I don't really know. So I was like, where was I? But anywho, it's not the point. Um, so basically, all this stuff happens to him. And I'm like, his mom is so sweet and so nice. Like, his mom is the only redeeming character. He wears makeup. Yeah. They're a nice little gang, your mates. I like them. They're nice. She was nice to Jill, and she was nice to all of his friends, and I love her. And she was so sweet and so nice, and she didn't deserve that, and Colin didn't deserve that. That's all I can say about episode three, because it's so depressing. Like, this show is so... I can't. Like, especially, like, the real-life stuff that has happened and the stuff that's happening right now consistently I'm like why did I do that to myself I don't understand like but I guess I like to suffer so I watched it and here we are so <laughs> I'm like that was like sad and like I've seen movies and shows and stuff about um AIDS and whatnot before and I was like I think the one that got me the most was the movie Holding the Man. That was literally the most depressing movie I've ever seen in my life. I was like what? Because I didn't know anything about it beforehand. Like going into it I didn't know anything so I didn't expect it to be so sad and I was like what? Like this movie I kind of was pre-warned and watching the ads I kind of knew what was gonna happen so I was like a mm, little bit prepared. Still sad but prepared. So yeah. <clears throat> Anyways on to episode four. In episode four, I forget what really happened, but one of the big major events is that Richie and um, Jill and um, Roscoe and Ash, basically they buy the building, even though it's Richie and Jill who buy the building, but basically all of them live together and they get enough money together to buy the building and Jill's parents come and they're like, how, do, how can you guys afford this? How can you guys do this? And they're like, well, we're all making really good money because Richie and Jill, they are actors and working, doing that kind of stuff. And um, Roscoe, he had a job as a hostess, but then, or a host, host hostess I don't know what like is it interchangeable I don't know so like he's a host of this club but then he leaves that job like I said and he becomes basically a sugar baby for this rich millionaire like politician man and then he realizes like halfway through that that like politician man is racist trash and basically only wants him as a token he's like see I have like that's how I feel when I see those things when they're like look diversity yay and you're just like so basically he leaves because he's like all of you guys are trash and I'm leaving. I understand that you're gay. Good God, I'm not gay. Then what are you with me? Well, every so often one has to shove one's face in the shit just so you can lift your head up and smell the sweet roses afterwards. So he leaves the politician man and I'm like, yes, do right by yourself. Because everybody was like, where'd you get so much money from? And he was like my money is my business because he was getting a lot of money from this politician man so he ends up going back to his hosting job <clears throat> and this is kind of where the central part of the story in all the trailers and all the stuff happens where Richie um, starts to realize that he may have AIDS so him so Richie Roscoe and um, what's it called 
Ash, they all go to get tested and Ash and Roscoe, theirs come back clean. But Richie knows good and well that his test is not going to be clean because the boy he was with had like different type of stuff on his back and he was like, oh god no. And I was like, why though? Like in the first episode, all the stuff he was doing, I was like, why? Why do you do this? Like, this is why they need to teach people that it's not just straight people that can catch STDs and whatnot. Because that can happen to anybody. I'm like, oh my gosh. Why? Like, can you imagine the amount of people that would have been saved? Like, gay, straight, regardless, any type of gender. Had people learned better information? Like, there's so much misinformation in the universe. But I'm happy that nowadays they're trying to make an effort to educate people better than they did back then. Because... This most definitely could have been avoided. I'm sorry, just to uh, answer the previous question. No matter how persistent a sexual partner is about not using contraception, remember it is always your right to say no. Always. Cool. Just like the coronavirus probably could have been avoided if people had utilized their brain cells earlier in time, but here we are, so... Now we're all full-blown pandemic and everybody doesn't know what's going on. And I'm like, you guys could have prevented this. Literally, it's the generation that went through AIDS that literally contributed to the coronavirus happening like this by not wearing a mask. Like, everybody's mom and dad is to blame. I don't care. So anyways, continuing along. Oh, and the people having parties. Don't do plague parties. That's ew. Like, I had never even gone outside. I don't even go outside anyways, but right when I was about to go outside, I was like, you know what? Never mind. It's my calling to never go outside. I'll just stay in the house. It's fine. I haven't seen anybody since like the 4th of July of 2019, and I'm fine with that. So yeah. Anywho, continuing along, we basically go through Richie's little turmoil thing. And I think his friends were really good because, you know, they took care of him. They tried. Like I said, Jill is such a good friend. I cannot. She's such a good friend. And she gets treated so raggedily. And I'm like, I cannot stand you people. Why does everybody treat her like that? Like, she's so cute. And I was like, I can't because she looks like Tessa Thompson. And, like, I wanted to see more of her little plot line. But I guess they, like... Because obviously, like I said, the coronavirus interrupted the production and all that. So maybe they had to cut some stuff out. Maybe they were going to do more. Because I feel like the show was a little bit shorter than it should have been. Maybe it should have been more episodes and maybe the episodes should have been longer. But I understand time restrictions and you have to cut a lot of stuff. And they did as much as they could do with what they had. So I appreciate them for that. Anywho, we get into Richie's plotline. And basically his parents, he's been lying to them. For a good amount of years. I forgot to say, the show starts out, they're 18, and when it ends, basically, they're all in their early 30s, late 20s. So they stay together for about 10 years, and yeah, so that's how this slowly progresses, which is what I said is the messed up thing. A lot of people with AIDS, it slowly progressed. They didn't just, boom, get AIDS one day. It was like, bleep, 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 and then, because like... There's so many things that happen before people catch AIDS. And I was like, I don't think people realize that. Because, like, with bloodborne pathogens and whatnot, like I said, they teach you a lot of this stuff. <clears throat> and in this show, they do try to tell you that it manifests differently in each person. Like, some people, they'll get cancer. Some people, they'll get HIV. Some people, they'll get infections. And some people, they'll just straight up die for no reason. And nobody understands. But some people, they live and they're, and, and they're fine, even though they have it. It's like, it. So like I said, kind of like the coronavirus, some people have all these other extenuating circumstances and complications and they need ventilators and they go into a coma, but some people they get the coronavirus one day, next week they're fine. So it's just crazy, crazy, crazy things in the universe. So anywho, basically Richie, um, all this stuff happens to him and he ends up hospitalized because one day he falls on the floor and Jill comes to help him and I was like, she is such a good friend, like my heart, I cannot my heart like I felt like that too at the part where Roscoe was crying because he was crying about um Colin and I was like ouch my soul I cannot he basically ends up in the hospital and his parents come down there because he had been avoiding them for years at this point and they thought that you know he was off doing plays he was off doing all this stuff and I was like the sad part is when people lie and don't tell like everybody what's really going on because they're embarrassed and they're ashamed and they don't want anybody to have to see them like that. And Have you got cancer and you didn't tell me? It's a sort of cancer. 
I only got it because I'm not well. It's like, I... My soul is shattered because of this, like... You know, it's so messed up, you know? But anywho, his mom and his dad comes to the hospital and they start acting crusty like they, of course they do, because everybody's parents in this are absolute trash, except for Jill's parents and Colin's parents. Colin's mom, like, so cute, so sweet. But anywho, eventually they, um... Richie's mom comes to talk to him and his dad basically has a breakdown. He's crying, he's sad because their son is dying. And his mom is like, what do you mean? Do you have, cause he has cancer and he has AIDS. And they're like, do you have cancer or AIDS? And he was like, it's both. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like it's not funny. Cause that's not funny at all. But can you imagine the horror? Like, oh my, like what? Not even just like, I can't. Out of all the things you don't want to have, you have both. And it's like, are you kidding me? That would be so horrible. Like, and, I, 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 like, there's nothing you can say. It's just a horrible thing and it's not fair. So, but I guess things are not fair. So basically his mom takes him and she's like, I am taking my son home. You guys are trash. And I'm like, his friends were the only ones there for him the whole time. And like, there's another lady at the hospital that says that to her. And she gets all offended as if she cared about her son, which she didn't. So I'm like, if you cared about him, then he wouldn't be in the situation. But here we are. So, um, well, he might have still been in it anyways. But I mean, he could have had more support and he might have done better had she not made him feel like he was absolute whatever for her treating <gasps> I forgot like what the people did to Colin's mom I cannot that is hideous oh my god why did I just remember that oh my goodness anyways doesn't matter so basically Richie's mom is a raggedy skank and she takes him home and she doesn't let any of his friends see him even all the way up until he dies. And she basically tells him they don't want to see you. And she doesn't let him answer the phone call. She doesn't let him do anything, which is so raggedy. And then she goes and meets Jill at a bridge just to say, this is your fault. Because had you told me, then this and that would have never happened. And I'm like, you crusty skank. Like, I would have pushed her off the bridge. I cannot. His mom deserved to be hit by the ferry boat that they took to get to that bridge. Like, I can not. So, anywho, then the show basically does its little wrap up it's pretty quick I feel like that was really short I'm like wow that was short but anywho um I thought it was good I mean I had pretty high expectations like obviously like I said I love the 80s seen so many 80s movies um and so many like 80s themed movies like that is my thing as much as I talk about the 70s and all that type of stuff the 80s is really where I feel like my heart stays like I'm even gonna make a little 80s playlist and put it in the bottom of this so you can like feel like you're in the 80s and that's why I did this whole look because it's my little 80s thingy like I love the 1980s that is me like I love it so yeah um as far as rating goes let's see I will give this show a 3.5 out of 5 stars just because I feel like there's a little bit because like there's nothing wrong with the acting there's nothing wrong with anything it's just like I feel like it could have been a little bit longer it could have just went on a little bit more <clears throat> impact you know what I mean um but yeah um as far as content rating goes like it's a 10 out of 10 12 out of 10 but just stars 3.5 out of 5 but yeah I really liked it I really liked the cast I think it was good I would watch it again and I'm gonna show it to my mom because I always show her everything and I was like I always laugh at those shows when they're like don't watch this with your mom because I'm like uh we watch everything together like <laughs> so yeah so um I think it's a pretty good show I would say go watch it when it comes out wherever you are so I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video